hello again to some of you who are here for the last talk. Uh, for those of you who are coming now, um, Gary, I'm the Cross Family Curator here at the New Museum. Um, and this is our second to last talk of a very exciting day. Um, and I think this is one of the most um, anticipated talks of the day with two of artists who have done amazing shows here at the New Museum this year. Um, first is Kari Upson, uh, whose show was on the third floor uh, amongst our focus shows this year um, in the spring. And before that um, was uh, a full museum show of Raymond Pettibon called The Pen of All Work, um, which was, um, both of which were huge successes, and um, we're also very excited to have them in conversation. I don't think you guys have spoken before. I've met Raymond once. Um, it's so funny, his show, your show was right before mine. Yeah. yeah, that's right, because I had to deal with the, like, the wall build out. As like, yes, exactly. this is, yeah, this is, this is how big the artwork could get through the door. Yeah. So I think we have, you know, you, you two, you know, although you don't know each other very well, I think there's a lot you have in common. Um, both of you, are native Southern Californians, um, and I think you know, growing up at different times, but also, you know, I think, uh, at least for me, um, both of your work um, deals with um, ideas about America and American culture um, through a very sort of personal lens, and you know, the kinds of culture you digested at different moments in time. Um, but also, I think with both of your exhibitions, um, drawing played a big role, especially in the first room for you, Kari. So maybe just as a starting point, um, you know, why don't we start with Kari, and we talk. A, maybe we can talk a little bit about the drawings you had in the exhibition. Um, you know, I think those are really interesting for me when I saw them because I also thought about Ray's work and and sort of the Ray's way that. Um, Ray organizes ideas, um, you know, the, his system of filing. And Margot and I were talking earlier today about your drawings um, and how they are sort of collections of ideas that then, you know, diverge off into other paths. Um, and they're sort of a way of thinking for you that I think is really interesting. So um, do you want to talk, talk about a little bit yeah, about what drawing um, means to you, maybe? I don't know what you mean by filing in terms of Raymond's work. Um, uh, but. It's funny because when this lecture was proposed to me, I was thinking, other than the fact that drawing is primary to my work, drawing and video are equal. Um, the drawing part is the actually the most joyous part of probably my practice, and then the video making is always really difficult. But it's drawing is the thing that like grounds me, and uh, I don't think any of my work I think all of my other work is a byproduct of my drawing. But as this was like proposed to me, I thought about Raymond a lot in terms of when I first saw his work at the Helter Skelter show. I was only 19, and I've said this before, it's not I interesting, but it was the first museum show I'd ever seen in my life. Um, Raymond's work kind of struck me in a very funny way, and I'll talk about that later, but... Uh, when I think about our work, I actually think about our differences more than how much we have in common. Um, maybe that comes around to it having more in common through its differences. Uh, when I was growing up in Southern California, I was a part of, uh, I, d I didn't look at art. Uh, I was a part of the whole skateboard, surfing, uh, scene, whatever the fuck, scene that was, but as a total bystander, uh, all my boyfriends were skateboarders, and like my whole position was sitting there with like my knees to my chest and watching them physically do these things. Uh, there was a, f I don't even remember because it's so long ago, but there was a famous place to surf down, I think it's like Trestles or South Trestle Beach, but there we would, I'd be picked up at like, you know, 4 a.m. and we would drive down to Orange County because I'm from San Bernardino and we're total outsiders. And you'd walk along a path that had a lot of drawing and text on it, uh, but you didn't even see that because it was dark and it was 4 a.m. And then you'd wake up on the beach and you'd be surrounded by like naked <laughs> surfing guys putting on their wetsuit. And my whole experience of Southern California in these kind of active things were always as a, as a witness to it. Um, so to get around to a few ideas of it, I look at Raymond's practice sometimes as so direct and the ink that can't be erased. 
it's it's so physical to me and immediate, whereas some of my drawings take seven years. Um, I don't always, I'm not always the only person who draws on them because like a 5B pencil filling in, you know, text for three weeks would just exhaust my wrist. So I, and I also am not the only person who draws on my drawings. So I started to really think about what it was like to like be a part of the Southern California scene. Baseball, my dad was almost um, taken in for the Oakland A's as a left-handed pitcher. Like my whole life was like this thing, but for some reason I was just like right outside of it. And I don't know if that relates to the drawings. For sure, yeah, I mean, I think it absolutely does. Um, I like to think about, you know, surfing as, you know, a starting point for drawing in some way, because I know obviously Raymond's surf drawings are really fantastic, but one of my favorite things in the show we did was showing some of the childhood drawings that you made that you've gone back to since, um, in particular, you know, some of the surfing ones and um, some images of, you know, warplanes and, um, you know, in terms of, you know, what do you think about when you look at some of those drawings from the very beginning, from when you're a kid? Um, you know, d does it, um, do you still think about drawing the same way? The subjects, you know, in, in many cases have continued, although the, maybe the, the, the narrative and the language around them has changed. Um, what was the experience like to look back at the first drawings? The, well, I was fortunate that my mother saved them, so that's, that's rather uncommon. And um, at one time I was working with my uh, nephew and niece as well, and um, trying, to, trying to put myself into the, back into the psychology of the, a young kid and however successful that that's at all possible and um, um, that I have a, a son who's who's going to be six in January and uh, I've been uh, working a lot with him, and uh, um, he's also a very uh, talented draftsman already. Bo, I think we've. Uh, he's al yeah. He's already. He's at a. Um, certain age where um, I don't know. I, I've always loved children's drawings, although they're. They're really impossible to recreate, you know, oneself. But um, it's it's a fortunate opportunity to to work with a kid. Yeah, and with some of those, I mean, it's been great to see them incorporated into some of your work as well. And um, a mural we did um, that we had in um, when the show traveled to Maastricht this summer had a great couple of drawings by Bo incorporated uh, into that process. Um, Kari, have you saved? Do you have your first drawings from when you were a kid, or do you, do you, did your parents keep that material around? Or um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, it's uh, it's funny thinking about it because my mom just recently. I don't know when there's a point where a parent decides that this isn't something that they're going to burden. But my mom gave me all of my drawings back. This is a tiny box. But I thought it was kind of um, premature in terms of they were all the Mother's Day cards and such and uh, notes. I guess I wrote to my brother in like traumatic events to tell him that to calm down. Uh, it was kind of it just happened about a year ago where all of a sudden this box was landing in my studio. I d actually didn't take a look deep look at it, uh, but this idea of revisiting. Childhood um, seems to be coming back in work m most recently. I think it's always been pointing to it, uh, but I've been spending a great deal of time in my hometown. And I was telling Raymond behind stage that uh, I've 
now been driving four days a week to this landlocked area in California called San Bernardino. And it's uh, uh, kind of a crazy feeling to come as an, a full grown adult and revisit your child home. Uh, no parents, by the way, completely, like they're living in Idaho almost full time. And the night before last, before I flew, flew here, was the first time we, I ever had a party in my parents' house. Whereas as a teenager, I would never ever try to do that. But uh, we had a kind of quiet, raging party of eight people after casting a uh, tree. And it was the most fun I've ever had um, in my life. But that's as close as I get to like revisiting my, my like imagery. I saw Raymond's, those drawings, were stood out to me more than anything in his show. Uh, that idea that you could even go back into an old piece of work. Like, uh, I have work from 10 years ago that I want to revisit and alter because it sucks. Um, that's not the case with those, I'm not saying, but there is this feeling of like, you're supposed to let it lie there as history. But like going back in my parents' house and actually having a party with drugs and drinking and like, dancing on the deck where it was never allowed, like really reinvigorated, like what the possibility, I don't even know yeah. if it's a possibility. Yeah, well, I, th I like that idea of revisiting too, because I think that was, you know, for us who got to work on Raymond's show, you know, looking back through a lot of the work, you know, thousands and thousands of drawings and also, um, you know, looking at how certain images, you know, recur throughout and how things have changed, whether it's, you know, baseball players, like the kinds of, stories you're able to tell or the kind of histories that you engaged with, um, you know, returning to certain motifs and iconography over time. But also, I think one of the special things about, you know, going to your studio race to, is how much material from throughout your career you're surrounded by and how, you know, um, especially with the collages, um, you know, you'll, you're willing to kind of um, even, you know, cut up older pieces and kind of give them a new, a new life and a kind of new, um, narrative context. Um, you know, uh, do you remember when you, you have you always sort of had that kind of lack of preciousness, preciousness about older material, or you know, when did you decide that you could actually kind of, um, you know, recycle and reuse it and, and kind of collage it in that way? Well, I used I used to work on a drawing from beginning to end, and. Um, over time, I worked on drawings and with the idea of getting back to them. And so, you know, sometimes they may be 20 years at the studio. And um, for, I mean, I mean, you're one of the few people who've, who've uh, seen my notes and and any amount of detail, I think. And um, for every for every drawing I do, there's a voluminous number of notes and writings and uh, you know enough to keep me busy for <laughs> several lifetimes. And um, Um, the any any particular drawing can you know at times they they uh, some of them um, were done over a, a period of time and until there's no space left and on the page you know to to write on so it's not entirely a new concept, you know, of, of narrative. It's just, it's. Just waiting for a, a time to find its yeah. finish, I guess, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that is, you know, um, this is what I was mentioning before with in terms of like, you know, filing, like, I, you know, um, you know, Ray has an incredible system of files um, organized by topic with clippings from, books and newspapers and, um, you know, all sorts of sources with you know, special quotes that are kind of edited and annotated. And um, I think one of the remarkable things, too, is that, you know, uh, these excise bits, you know, taken out of context, 
that you're still able to remember where they came from and um, that, you know, that there is that catalog exists in your mind as well too, which I think is something that's very um, special. And that's kind of maybe what I was saying with, you know, with your drawings that they have a kind of, there's this kind of accumulation um, and an exhaustive exhaustiveness um, to, I think some, a lot of the ways that you work as well. Um, yeah, I know, mean, it's interesting him, Raymond saying no space left. I think about that a lot with the, the drawings. Um, I work really large scale um, when a certain topic uh, comes up or a piece of um, an image or even uh, just a reading, I know exactly what drawing it goes to, even if it's been sitting in my studio for a very long time, it'll feel very urgent or immediate that that goes to deliberated to a certain drawing. It could be frustrating because I have a studio at home, so I can't always get, to, I have a kid, so I draw at home at late night when she's asleep, and I can't always get to that drawing with a certain piece of text. Um, then I have to footnote it. I don't keep files, but I have deep uh, amounts of um, post image sourcing. I don't know how to say that. I don't rifle through things waiting for it to like be plucked out. Uh, it comes either immediately or uh, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't work through a file cabinet. Um, um, it, it, it's recent, it's current, and then it goes deliberately toward a certain drawing. And it gets frustrating when the drawing's not in front of me because the idea that I have to like put it in my iPhone to note it the next day feels kind of dead, so. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think also I, thinking about your work, Kari, you know, I, um, for the catalog, you know, Paul McCarthy did a really nice interview with, and Jim Shaw also wrote a nice piece. And, you know, I think as a younger artist from Los Angeles, and you talked about Helter Skelter as well, you know, I think all of your works are very, very different. And I think, you know, um, Ray, your work is different than Jim and, and Paul as well. Um, but I think, you know, there, the kind of um, the voluminousness of their works um, as voluminous, a, yeah, like the like the volume, the, yeah, um, or just the excessiveness, or not even the excessiveness, but like the sheer volume of what they produce. You know, how much you know were how much were you influenced by that show in general? Even though you know, I think your work, you know, is, is so different than what than that particular generation. How like how much did that loom large for you? That um, do you think it's something like endemic to California or LA? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I I was born and raised in Southern California. Were you born in Southern California? Uh, this is all Tucson, but. Uh, Tucson, yeah, I guess it's. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. I think that show, <laughs> uh, I've mentioned it a couple times before and then I almost feel like I over mentioned it because it probably was definitely the biggest uh, dent in my aesthetic history because I had never been to a museum before. Um, I remember that show very particularly because my boyfriend who studied at Long Beach State was a painter, he was five years older than me, brought me there, we got in a big fight and he left me there, and I had to figure out a way to get home. And it was a very weird moment in my life because I feel like I kind of got forced into mulling around in that show longer than I wanted to. Uh, Raymond's work on the back wall, you were on that back wall of the Geffen, from what I remember, which was very industrious like space. I kind of had this attitude of like, I could fucking do this, like, uh, uh, I was completely like the immediacy of it and whatever the attitude was, was like whatever. And then I found Mike and then I found Paul. It was a big deal. Like I, I don't even know how I took all that in until later and then realized uh, how, how much that meant to me. Um, at the time it was just my boyfriend left me there. I was stuck there and then <laughs> The second time I ever saw a museum, I was 21 and went to the Spengel or something in Hanover, Hanover in Germany, because my mom's from there, and then saw Daniel Richter's and uh, the, the 
other guy. Um, so it, it's like uh, my main focus, I was painting since I was 16. Uh, I didn't know a lot, but those guys, yeah, those guys left a huge impression on me. I mean, yeah, that's it. Like, I don't know what else to and, say. And Ray, for you, you know, I think, you know, obviously, you know, your work developed independently. It's not like, you know, what Mike and Jim went to school together. Um, but, um, you know, do you, I think you and Jim especially, because you're the two that I've worked closely, most closely with, you know, um, Jim also has this kind of collecting sensibility. Um, do you feel like, you know, um, obviously you're dealing with, with books and literature. Do you feel like your work I in that sense was shaped by California? Or was that, you know, do you think it would be, your work would be the same if you grew up in, in New York? Um, uh, I mean, some, somewhat it's inevitable. Your, um, your history and your geography is gonna, I think there's too much, too much emphasis placed on it, especially for hel Helter Skelter, which right. at the time got horrible reviews. And um, <laughs> I remember Paul, Paul Schimmel, sent me a uh, big stack of reviews in it. And uh, they were all just about, uh, a lot of it was about reviewing, um, uh, not just California, but Los Angeles right. especially, which Los Angeles is, is uh, doesn't get the best press for many reasons, you know, and probably deservedly so, you know, considering it's a uh, film capital of the world. And, and uh, but it, it became uh, a very important uh, seminal show and in eventually, in, in Europe especially. And- um, Did it travel? No, but it influenced. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of German artists came to see that show. As far really? as I remember, yeah. I don't know why, but. I mean, I've, I. I'm not much of a surfer, but I've surfed trestles and. Uh, uh, I was just saying that um, how. Uh, much I like San Bernardino in that area. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's such a strange thing to say. <laughs> Trestles is the place where you walk down that path, though, right? Where well, they the the railway. Yeah, where but it was always like locals would, would do graffiti, a lot of text and imagery. I mean, again, I would see it uh, the first time I didn't see it, and you only see it when you walk back because it was daylight. Um, it's been a long time. I don't remember uh, that part. I looked it up tonight because I wanted to make sure my memory was correct, and then all of it's been kind of um, grayed over because I don't think the path exists. I think that there's some new issue about getting through. It was one of the, I mean, I was 14 when I snuck out to, I don't think it counts when you sneak out at 4 a.m. to go out, but like to the beach, but I snuck out and I mean, women have since then become major surfers, even skateboarders. But at the time, there wasn't any women involved. It was really uh, interesting. When I say bystander, I don't even know what that means anymore. But like taking all that in, uh, it's it's kind of like a distant memory. But I look at um, Raymond's work and just even with the baseball and my dad playing almost you know high level baseball. Everything feels uh, a little bit like I'm living out somebody else's fantasy. You know what I mean? Like my fantasy is their fantasy. And then there's a lot of mirroring where I don't even think, think I'm mirroring myself, but I'm mirroring different Imago point of views. And I, I mean, I don't know if Raymond's directly taking in some of his own experiences and then putting it back out, but even image making at some level is being a bystander. I mean, 
at some level we're witnessing something and then putting it down. Um, yeah, well, I think both ba you know baseball and surfing both have a strong visual what? aesthetic. To and them. watching the surfers uh, put on and take off their wetsuits, wetsuits. in the parking lot. And there you go. It looms large in the <laughs> in the memory. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you know both. The other thing I think both of you have in common is I mean you do both make video, and that's been an important yeah. part of your work, even though you know it appears maybe more sporadically. And and you know Ray, you return to it from time to time. Um, uh, you know, uh, in terms of like you know uh, you know ideas. I mean, we know Ray, you have a lot of scripts that you still want to accomplish, um, and a, a lot of great material um, still still to be produced. Um, you know, uh, do you think your style of video making um, would change today as opposed to those ones you were making in the in the early 80s? Well, I'm finally getting back to, to making video um, scripts that go back 20 plus years, a lot of them. And um, I haven't, I really haven't been ma making art to any degree, you know, if, apart from that in the last year and a half just because of personal issues. But um, um, I can't I can't say how how the 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 style is gonna is gonna change or or, or not until I do it. Um, I don't I don't work things out with storyboards. I don't you know I spend time on casting or uh, of any sort and I don't know we'll we'll see yeah there's always been a sort of like a lot of sort of imp improvisational elements to them it seems like in the earlier ones and um, for Kari I mean it seems like you're Yours are very precise, I think, in a way, and I'm wondering, like, I don't, without that knowing. That makes me so happy. Yeah. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Completely. Uh, I mean, it, obviously, the desire, you know, like, what you're trying to get across is in many ways very different, but, like, you know, I don't, w what is your process for, you know, do you have scripts and things, like, how tightly is that um, controlled? Uh, so maybe in the future I'll show how that actually comes about, but uh, generally, I, if I have sound piped in or I memorize, I do three or five versions. So everything is, I do a lot of repetition, doubling, dividing, and uh, re-watching. I've always believed that half of my work is just looking back at it um, to inform what the work is. So a lot of times I'll make a video just so that I can remake it. Um, so you might be right about the idea that kind of, it's highly controlled. Uh, I remember the video in Raymond's uh, show. I love that video. And just the the two nights before where I said we had this party at my parents' house uh, was one of the best videos I've ever made because I haven't seen the footage, so don't hold me to that. <laughs> but inside, it was one of the best videos because we didn't, um, I allocated at the bar down on 40th Street what everybody's part was. I gave them a vague uh, subject, and I said, you need to stick to it no matter what. So everything was decided in 30 minutes. Then we just started filming with two cameras. I looked at my phone and realized that half of the footage was, of course, lost. Like, it, it, it might be one of those situations where I decide to re-videotape or I deal with the original. Um, maybe that's just the difference. I, I think I negate a lot all the way down, um, actually quite often. So it's same with the drawings. Like I feel like everything I do is erasable. It, it, it can be a whole nother image can go on top and completely negate what's underneath it. Does that make sense? 
makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, there's only one small scene in any of my videos that was that was improvised because this guy seemed to have a natural gift for improvisation and um, otherwise every everything is word scripted. there's not scripted every word did you write the script oh yeah i mean uh, uh, a lot of times directly on uh, cue cards and there's there's never i don't have the means you know the, the production facilities to to make them any other way and so uh, sometimes sometimes i'd write as i as on the spot or but uh uh, it's actually a compliment, you know, to when people think it it, it is improvised, yeah. you know, because I, I, I do. I, I do think I have somewhat of a gift for naturalistic dialogue, you know, if, if anything. And that's that's primarily what most of my films are, you know, they're not they're not uh, action pictures or. Yeah, I mean the rhythms of the of the dialogue in those videos are so so memorable and so precise, and I think that's sort of also what you find in you know in your drawings even today. Even though I mean, let's say sometimes the source material is is very specific um, in, from literature or elsewhere, but I think there there is a kind of um, you know a, a tempo and a syncopation to a lot of your drawings that is what gives them their you know I think their their unique character. I think we always know. Maybe you feel the same, Corey. That when you, you you read Raymond's writing, even if it you know it has a other source, like somehow it's coming from him. Um, I love the idea of the cue cards. Yeah, that's like the <laughs> only thing I've never seen anybody use. Like it's so direct. Like you can switch it up in minutes. I never knew that. I mean, I always I heard it was scripted. And the actors were sunglasses you know in any circumstance so they can <laughs> <laughs> and who, who would you say was your like the best actor that you worked with given that most of them were not you know real actors i used to to love to work with mike watt a lot you know because um and i haven't for a while because you know he's just so so busy i hardly see him and um I don't, it's been a while since I lived in LA. And uh, I've. He's very I've committed. He's like really throws him. I mean, even when he performs, he has that. Like yeah. And I've, I've been blessed with, with so many uh, actors, you know, that uh, I uh, just out, just people I know, you know, who. Like I said, I don't, I don't go through uh, any um, casting regimen, you know, for whatever reason. And Kari, I mean, you're often the your own star. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know how how do you how do you, how do you rate your own acting? Do you feel like you're <laughs> you're getting better? That is an awful question, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I actually wish I, I didn't put myself, I, I constructed this idea, like I set up the structure, uh, that I don't do ready-made video and that even when something, my mom, I videotaped my mom for an hour doing something post a sculpture that was better than the sculpture itself. And I still couldn't utilize the video of my mother because I decided that I don't, use I'm always my central character that I always take the subject position um, so I recreated it and that's probably where the whole me becoming my mother came from this one sculpture there's such resentment and um, anger in me filming her post this sculpture that there was no other way like <laughs> but 
me becoming her, and I don't even know if I do her justice, so I would think my mom's a much better actress than me. That being said, I came off the tails of this last uh, video and I haven't seen the footage. Um, it is, uh, I'm, it might exhaust itself because I do think that there's a point that I'm getting better at it. I like how uncomfortable my early video was. Um, I hate, it, it might not seem like it, but I really do hate being on video. It's very hard because I set up my own camera a lot of times, o only until recently, I don't run my own camera. And so if I fuck up all the tech equipment, everything's lost. Um, I used to have this uh, studio in North Hollywood where the airplanes would go over and I'd have to get in prosthetics, prosthetic vagina, prosthetic boobs, hair, makeup, dirty, grotto, start filming something that supposedly means something. I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's supposed to be the character. How do I become the character? And it was just this lonely event. Like, so uh, I think that work upon reflection might be better than the work now where I have help, um, where we have fun, like where, <laughs> where, you know, like where I don't have to make sure that the tape, I actually still use cassette, like is downloaded correctly. Like, it, it, who knows? Like, yeah, I mean, it's a very I can't different. can't predict it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and I think you know, also great for you for your videos. I mean, that's a different process than when you're in the studio and making drawings. Um, you know, one other thing I thought about in the two of you, both with both of your shows, you know, Car, your work obviously has a strong autobiographical component, and you know, obviously your mom's a big part of that. And I think Ray, I think a lot of people with your show didn't don't always know that there is so much autobiography, um, and there was you know parts of that show that were you know dedicated to your mom and your aunt. Um, you know, um, how much did your mom, you know, um, play a role in, in you know, drawing and writing? Um, I think we talk about, you know, your, um, your dad's um, relationship to literature a lot, but what role did your mom play for you in, in terms of encouraging the direction of what your work became? Well, um For a long time, she was really my only audience. I mean, um, I wasn't any overnight success. And um, my father was a writer and a teacher of English. And, um, but I, you know, I can't say he was a um, influence on me uh, at all, really. He was a, I, I've just been um, reading, rereading some of his, his works. He was, a, he was an excellent writer, but um, in uh, uh, his own specific field and um, uh, we never had the kind of relationship that would um, of an encouragement or um, influence upon art in any way. Um, well, um, I think maybe, Kari, did you, um, did you have a question for Ray, by any chance, that you wanted to ask? <laughs> I mean, the f I guess we're kind of um, abstractly covering the idea of text. It's I never used text until I graduated CalArts and never, I mean, I painted, but I never put text into it. Um, but I think we're kind of abstractly covering why we use text in the work. I was never really sure I use a lot of other people's words. Uh, then it tends, the drawing is so big that I t have to flip it upside down in order to work at the top half upside down. And then I tend to use the s research material, which can be anything um, from theory to uh, any anybody's words, and then I generally reflect upon it on the 
top, but I flip it upside down to like work more intuitively back like a conversation. But the one thing I wanted to ask Raymond, I think was out of all of the mediums I work in, sculpture, I don't think I do installation work for whatever reason. Like I don't, I don't think about things in terms of installation necessarily, but um, I guess I do video, sculpture, what, whatever else, performance. Um, is that the in drawing I can work drunk, and I've thought about this a few times, very seriously because I've woken up some mornings where I was like, the, I did that, and. Uh, it's a, a it's a kind of a hard uh, place to to land, but I can't get to certain spots without it. And it's I, I describe it when I flip the drawing upside down. Um, and I always wondered like if it was like my deeper self that was working on it, another self, like or I don't really understand why sometimes the component of being slightly subconscious and not on a conscious level can produce work, and I'm curious if you're ever in that zone. No. <laughs> Shit. I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't drink much anymore, for one thing, so um, uh, I'm sure I'd, I'm, I'm sure Some, you know, some, some of my drawings were done un under the influence of. Uh, I don't of necessarily alcohol, think it's alcohol. I'm saying that, like. I wouldn't recommend alcohol. I mean, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I haven't, I haven't done speed in many, many years or Adderall. <laughs> but um, those, those. Uh, uh, and I don't recommend any uh, anything. I mean, I can't I can't fuck with my uh, heart condition or anything in any way. But uh, they they do have a they do speed up the synapses of the brain, you know, in in ways that uh, can help the the kind of associative of nature of my writing, you know, and um, I, I mean, I've I've been asked many times, uh, like, where do you get your ideas, or uh, uh, LSD, or whatever, you know, it must be acid, or you know, I've I've done that a, a handful of times in my life, very weak versions of it that were of no uh, useful purpose purpose for making art, and um, my 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 art is pretty sober minded. Yeah, I think that's also what the show for what uh, you know a revelation for me who's been looking at the drawing so. Long was to actually that you were willing to reveal that process and how constructed those <laughs> drawings really are. You know how much, you know, time and research and history goes in to those things. I think is a very you know part of what makes them special. But I think also something that maybe isn't necessarily, you know, it's uh, not the, the it's 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 like recently too. I started doing kind of more athletic events with with people, and I I thought it was really. Well, being out in San Bernardino in the desert under the sun painting this one tree over and over makes your mind open up. It's not necessarily yeah. about like getting drunk or it's just like being s outside. Uh, I think meditation can, can do it too. But it's uh, it's been something that's come up a lot for me with other practices. I can't yeah. do anything that is mind altering. Um, I don't think meditation hurts anybody, but it, it is funny how much in, informs like the framework of drawing for me and fluid text and such, where it seems to come, maybe it's deep, deep inside, but somehow there's a like an activity out then back in that seems to register. 
I don't know, I have this romantic idea that there was like this uh, ability to go surfing and like see the ocean from that back in and then like go in and make work or it's, it, 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 I've always felt a little bit on the fringe in terms of like I have access to only so many things that I am surprised when sometimes I make something that seems to come from somewhere else. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It only really happens with me with drawing. Well, if I, if I, if I could, uh, you know, throw a baseball 95 plus like your father, I <laughs> probably would, <laughs> would be playing baseball, you know? Yeah. And, um, if I could surf as well as you know some some others, I'd probably be out on the beach, you know, more often. Well, we're very lucky that both of you choose to draw very well. So, <laughs> um, thank you guys very much. Um, we're out of time, but. Um, yeah.